Hey traders, this is Dr. Greg McLeod from Elite Traders University. I want to just welcome you to our weekly Forex forecast called Bulls vs. Bears. And I'm going to be uh, going over the technical and economic picture uh, for the coming week starting with December 5th, 2022. Thank you for joining me and tuning in. And we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, and uh, just a couple of moments, I just want to go ahead and uh, make a couple of announcements about you know our, our risk disclosure on our screen. Make sure you understand all the risks associated with foreign exchange trading, and we'll go ahead and get that up there. Make sure you understand all that uh, uh, that's going on there. Okay, and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, go to our main screen, and we'll go to using my favorite tool for actually uh, uh, tracking this uh, the economic uh, picture. Uh, my market heat map was an arrangement of currency pairs by percentage change, but it's also a powerful tool for for actually uh, uh, for charting the market. And let's go ahead and get that on the main display. Okay, let's get ready to do the risk disclaimer. Goodbye, Mr. Risk Disclaimer. Okay. And we're going to get started here. Uh, my market heat map. Uh, you get a free trial for 30 days if you'd like. And we're going to go right into right now. Uh, it's, uh, it's Saturday. Uh, going on Sunday actually and uh, uh, the market is quiet very quiet so there's no uh, all the pairs are, are in the gray right now but when the uh, market is actually alive and kicking we see like it's behind me on the board green things are moving in uptrend reds moving in a downtrend gray stay away one of the top problems that traders have is not knowing what to trade when to trade and the my market heat map is a powerful tool for helping you uh, actually determine that but it's a full featured a tool as well it's like a Swiss Army knife for traders, and it has a lot of different things: market hours, technical analyzer, uh, national holidays, sentiment, currency correlations, the forex calculator, and things. But we're going to focus on the economic calendar right now, because the economic calendar is the first thing I check in the market, because the economic calendar tells us where the party is, where the uh, the big action is going to be in, in the market. So even though you don't, you may not understand the uh, you know some of the, the the economic announcements that are coming up this week. Um, is it really important for us to know what's going on in the market? Not to put our heads in the stand and just be focused in on support and resistance and trends and blah, 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 blah. When actually this stuff actually starts to move ahead of time. And part of being in the Elite Traders University, I teach my students to check the economic calendar to find out where the party is so we know what, what to trade in, in line with the heat map. And so uh, we're going to look for the high impact items uh, on the heat map, I mean on the economic out calendar. And we can look at the, we have the first one coming up this Monday, December 5th. We have the uh, the the RBA, the Reserve Bank of Australia, is going to have their interest rate announcement. Now, interest rates are one of the largest drivers of currency movement. Uh, when a, a central bank like the FOMC, like Jerome Powell and the FOMC for the United States, or the Bank of Canada, or the Bank of England, when they raise interest rates, it causes the currency to spike up and to really, or spike down, depending on whether they're hawkish or they're dovish, okay? And so uh, with the current uh, inflation that's been gripping the world, everything from, you know, gasoline to, uh, you know, to your loaf of bread, it's been, it's gone up as, you, as, you, as you've been noticing. And what the central bank's mandate here in the United States the FOMC, their mandate have a two a dual mandate. One is price stability, and the second is for full employment. So anytime these things go out of whack, the FOMC will either print more money or take back money and raise interest rates in order to fight inflation or increase employment. So we have the uh, the Reserve Bank of Australia is going to have their rate statement coming out December fifth, of two thousand twenty two, at uh, roughly about ten. Yeah, about about ten thirty p.m. Uh, so, so it's going to be the evening in the U.S. Eastern Time, and uh, when if they announce a rate hike, then that could cause the Aussie dollar to appreciate. If they uh, decide to to uh, leave rates unchanged, it may, may, may make the, the currency just not move any move at all. But usually, we look for big 50, 60, 70 pip moves after uh, a rate announcement. So we don't know what they may say, but we know that. The, the market is be focused on the Australian dollar, whether it's pound dollar or a pound Australia dollar or the Aussie the New Zealand dollar, or the Aussie Swiss or the Aussie dollar. We're looking for the Australian dollar complex to be moving uh, around this time and even a few hours beforehand, too. 
and uh, people taking positions ahead of this announcement. So we want to be uh, aware of that. And also at uh, about, uh, this will be about 7.30. We're gonna have. Um, we're actually gonna have no about nineteen. That's twelve. Yeah, seven thirty. We're actually gonna have the Australian uh, gross domestic product coming out, nineteen thirty, and then we're gonna have that coming out on Tuesday. Okay, um, so Australian dollars gonna, for the next two days is gonna uh, uh, gonna be very uh, uh, in play. So we want to look for look at the Australian dollar. Also at ten a.m. on Wednesday, December seventh, we're gonna have the Bank of Canada rate announcement and the Bank of Canada. Uh, we'll we'll either talk about raising rates to fight inflation, and that could be uh, that could move the Canadian dollar higher. We'll look at the technical picture to see what uh, uh, what, what those levels are. And we're going to focus in on the Australian dollar, Canadian dollar. Again, uh, when a central bank cuts rates or makes a rate announcement, that's usually uh, going to drive the currencies and make them move. So you may say, "Well, oh, I like trading the you know the Swiss Swiss yen or something like that." And, um, but the, the, a lot of times, the, the picking the right currency or picking the currency where the party is, where other traders are trading, big banks and hedge funds are also trading too, well, you're going to get uh, the odds of being able to find some pips, okay? Because if you pick something that no one's interested in and it doesn't move, then you don't make any money, okay? So you want to look at the Canadian dollar, and that's going to be at 10 a.m. on Wednesday, December 7th, and that's going to be uh, 10 a.m. Eastern time. Now, uh, later on, on Thursday, we're going to have the gross domestic product quarter on quarter out of Japan. Japanese news sometimes uh, doesn't move the market that much, but uh, we'll see looking at the technical picture. But then, then that comes out around uh, about almost 8 o'clock uh, Eastern time. Then finally, at Friday, December 9th, we're going to have the uh, manufacturing production month on month uh, out of the UK. And the gross domestic or GDP gross domestic product month on month as well, both coming out at 2 a.m. So they got two big announcements coming out at the, around the same time, and that will mean that the UK, that the British pound is going to be in play as well, and that's a currency that we want to uh, to watch out for. Month on month doesn't stand for mom, even though we love mom, but it stands for a month on month, or we're basically going to look at the. Um, the, uh, since December hasn't finished yet, they're going to be looking at October numbers compared to November numbers. We don't really care about the numbers themselves. We just know that there's going to be volatility in the market, and the technical picture will tell us how to trade it. Okay, uh, and so so those are the 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 big the, they're just fun with flags. Look at the flags, and we can figure out what to trade next. Okay, let's move, moving right along. Let's go ahead and go right into the technicals on the Australian dollar, Canadian dollar. Japanese yen, pound dollar, and we're also going to take a look at the dollar index because you know uh, the dollar is the counter currency in these uh, in, in in the major currency pairs. And when we know where the U.S. dollar is going, we'll know what the other seven pairs are doing or the other seven currencies are doing as well. Okay, so we're going to take a look at that, but we're also going to take a look at the euro as well. The euro is the most widely traded uh, financial instrument in the, in the universe, right? Uh, more than dilithium crystals and, and cold pressed lanthanum if you're a Trekkie, right? But um, Euro is highly traded, and we're going to take a look at that because the, 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 uh, the Euro is the anti dollar. So, whatever the dollar is doing, usually the, the Euro is doing just the opposite. So, let's take a closer look at the technical picture. And we're going to start off the dollar index, and we're going to start off the monthly chart. So, we're going to go way out there. We're going to zoom out and take a 50,000 foot view uh, of the market. And one of the mistakes that traders make is that they look at too small of time frames. And they, you know, everyone has a cell phone. They have these, you know, the smartphones and things like that. And they're very convenient. They're portable. They have more power than some of the, all the computers that we had back in the in the 80s and 90s, right? At the palm of your hand. The problem is the screen size. There's just a little bit of screen size. So you really can't get the full picture unless you maybe turn it portrait wise, be able to, to see the entire market like you can on your screen or on multiple screens. So here we have the, uh, we can look at a month of data. We can looking at, basically we're looking at like 30 years of data. And you, you can see, the, you know, you can get the meandering, how the price is moving, the troughs, the peaks of support and resistance. And these support and resistance levels go on for decades. And the, so the market has a memory. And so these levels of support and resistance, we were you know, channeling between 70 and 89, the US dollar index, we broke out, 
We had a high of about 104, you know, back in uh, 2016. And we've just moved sideways in this sideways consolidation between uh, 104.50 and 89.22. A double bottom there was powerful where we got a breakout and we broke out to a, 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 an all-time high, or actually a high that we have not seen. We haven't seen this high since uh, 2002. So, so basically a 23-year high. And so that's the highest it's, it's, it's been, and we re rejected off of that area. Now, what we can also do is to, I'm going to give a little trading lesson here too, uh, at no charge, isn't that great? And uh, uh, I'm a nice guy like that. So we take a, we go from here, we can take a Fibonacci from the bottom to the top, do a Drake song from the bottom to the top, and now we're here, right? So now we're here going from the high of 120.91, a high that we didn't have not seen since July 2nd, 2001, all the way down to a swing low uh, back on uh, April 1st, 2008. That's like during the, the financial crisis, down to 70.85. We've been meandering in a slow up, up move sideways basing from 2016, or actually 2014, to about 2022. So about six years we moved sideways. And then finally we had a breakout. Uh, that breakout like June 1st, and we broke out from that 104.50 area and we spiked all the way up here. Notice that we went to the to the 86% Fibonacci retracement here and um, and price rejected that area. This was a level of congestion back in 2001 and we rejected off that area perfectly and then dropped down precipitously down to this level of support, retesting this breakout, uh, actually this uh, 2017 high. So basically price has returned to the scene of the crime, okay? Now, you say, well, Greg, this is a monthly chart, you know, I mean, come on, your, your stops are going to be huge, you know. So let's, let's, so we can take these lines and keep them and move down to a, what we do is multiple time frame analysis. Well, we use higher time frame support and resistance and superimpose them on lower time frame charts so we can find precise entries uh, with low risk and high probability. So let's go ahead and scale, uh, drop on down, move on down to a daily chart and you can see. Uh, where we re uh, have that that point of rejection at the Fibonacci on the daily chart. Each bar represents one day of, of chart data. And we can see that price has moved up to that level. We can actually back up a little bit to a weekly. Um, and then we can see a um, similar move there. A strong move to the, uh, uh, we have like a shooting star, a long wick candle, prices breaking down. Breaking down to a level of support where buyers may try to step in here, but the Fibonacci is down here 101.44, some 300 pips away. And so, and we're moving straight down. I mean, this is, thing is falling like a rock, right? Why? Because, you know, Jerome Powell, you know, um, if we back up a little bit, we just had uh, non-farm payroll, if you're watching this now, non-farm payroll uh, was very surprising. A lot of people forecasted that the, uh, that we would have uh, uh, just only 200,000 jobs created in the United States. Um, and the, actually the non-farm payroll announcement uh, came out at 263,000 jobs created, which was better than expected. Also wage growth was double what was expected as well. And can you believe it? We created more jobs and people got paid more and the dollar fell. Okay. And, and that's the paradox that traders don't fail to understand is when the uh, when job growth is too high, then it creates inflation. And if it creates inflation, then stocks don't do well when there's inflation, right? Um, so there's that Goldilocks kind of, you don't, don't want too many jobs created, not people make a lot of money, which is really counterproductive, uh, you know, it's counterintuitive, it's kind of a paradox, right? Um, but that's how, how our economy is, it looks at Wow, people have too many jobs, too many people buying stuff causes prices to go up, creates inflation, which means the Fed will have to step in and raise interest rates, right? And so we have this falling dollar. So um, so let's go ahead and move to it. We move to our daily. We can see that price is, we're, we're hitting this level of support, which, you know, people might say, well, look, Greg is hitting support and the support and, support and the resistance people and the, and the supply and demand zone people will say, well, look, we're, we're, we're at an area of support here. It was like, yeah, but this thing is coming down really hard. We might look for a break of this this 104.50 area and we'll probably move you know, 300 pips down to 101.70 or so. That looks like what's gonna happen is we are 
really seeing a very a strong push here. Now this is a daily chart. We can walk this down even farther down to a four hour chart. And that's our dealer charts. Dealers look at four hour charts. And I worked for a brokerage and you know, use some dealers too. And they they look at four hour charts because that's where they look to screw people. No, no, that, that's not true. Um, but a lot of people don't look that far so they don't know, they don't see the structure and see this what's going on here. And this thing spiked, it tried to go up, you know, it tried to rally and then it came back down. So this is a bearish reversal. Um, and we could see if we could break that 104.50 area, we could go, go down. We'll see, well, Greg, this thing is a this is a dollar index. No one even trades a dollar index, Greg. What am I looking at this for? Aha, contraire. But remember, we look at the, um, you know, we can look at the, oh, let me back this out back to our monthly. And then we're going to look at the anti-dollar, which is called the euro, right? EURUSD, the single unit, European unit, which is uh, our really moves in the opposite direction of our of all drawings and we can see that uh, looking for a monthly chart we have also and we can do the same thing this is the same process repeat rinse wash and repeat we were looking at uh, significant levels of resistance on our monthly chart we had a low of a uh, low of the uh, 81 86 or so right around the the, about the year 2000 and we rallied to a high of around the 160 area back in 2008 for the financial crisis. We've been trending down since then and going in the opposite direction of the US dollar, right? And in fact, you can actually compare on the trading view, you can actually compare the EUR to the, the Dixie. And you can see that that they basically be going, they, they're, mirror, they're mirrors of each other. Orange line representing the, 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 um, the DXY or the dollar index a basket of currencies versus the US dollar and then the euro. And so we're seeing this this con this uh the, the, this negative correlation here. So if we see this move up from this these lows, we have some support, um, monthly support that came in pretty strong here at the 104 uh, 105 40 area. We broke above that after piercing that area Prices came down, people probably thought it was going to be a triple bottom, broke down, came back up, and now we're peaking back above this area. Um, and um, and then we, and we also we have a new level of support that came in at that 95.05. That, that, that was a low. That was a low that we haven't seen. We haven't seen a low like that since 2002. So almost a 12-year a a year low, right? Um, so, so that's our monthly chart. And we actually have a little bit of an uptrend going on right now. So let's move, scale on down to a daily. We can see higher highs and higher lows, right? So looking at this, you know, um, the, the, we, we're constructively bullish on this because we're making some higher highs and higher lows. We have some uh, some daily resistance that may come into play uh, in the, the 107.81 area. But let's go back to our monthly. We can, again, take our Fibonacci's from the top to the bottom and superimpose these monthlies on the uh, lower time frame charts and we can see that you know these are possible price targets where we can see maybe a one the, the 110 36 area coming into play uh, but we would probably see a test of 107 81 beforehand we broke the 200 simple moving average breakout higher highs and higher lows and we saw the US dollar index that was actually turning down and so we can see the euro is actually turning up and so we also have another bit of, of resistance on the daily here uh, at the 106 uh, 106 30 area and that's still um, uh, 10603 I'm sorry so that's still about you know about 60 63 pips away um, still uh, we are, we're on the bulls versus bears you know we are we are bullish the um, the euro and we are bearish the 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 um, the U.S. dollar index, the U.S. dollar. And remember, it is the euro versus the U.S. dollar, right? So that's the that's the key there. So I'm gonna make my make my bull disappear. Goodbye. Okay. Now since now we're gonna find that as a theme throughout as we look at some other currencies, right? Now remember, we have the Reserve Bank of Australia coming up next. Uh, but I want to just drop this down to a four-hour chart so we can. Uh, Go down to where people live here in this and then we can see this four hour chart 
where we have we basically flagged out we had my nice flag area flag pattern and then we have a flag pull right from the, the start the base of the move up and so we have this flag pull if you ever heard that the flag pattern and usually what happens is when we take a flag pull and we clone it like a sheep and we take the pull and we add, add it to the breakout point we usually get some type of a a, a possible uh, possible price target 11210 uh, but there's also a Fibonacci at 11058 which uh, might come into play uh, but remember we have other targets that are you know much more you know I'm not much of a long-term trader I'm looking at this one here I could scalp this up to 10606 and that is about uh, you know, about 60 pips away then that's that's all I need to uh, to to, uh, to 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 feed my need my need for pips right so uh, so let's go ahead and so we're bullish on the euro let's go ahead and uh, look at the uh, next currency that's going to be in play which is the Australian dollar uh, for the Reserve Bank of Australia so we're gonna look at the AUD USD now, uh, now, Australia has a, a you know it, it is a uh, it's it has a it's very close proximity to China, and so um, you know if you know if you've been watching the news, you see that China is having uh, some civil unrest because of their zero COVID policy, and so um, so that could affect uh, you know uh, the Australian dollar and the Australian economy, uh, whether they want to move forward with rate hikes. When their biggest uh, trade partner, China, is having unrest, which could dampen global demand for their natural resources like iron ore and copper. You know, copper is the, you know, Dr. Copper is how we, you know, would look at global growth. Copper is being used in pipes for, for, for homes and buildings, uh, electrical wires, and, and for, and, uh, and all kinds of electronics. And so those resources are in high demand because they're manufactured. China is the manufacturer, and if there's any type of disruption there, that could, you know, when China catches a cold, literally, you know, Australia and New Zealand will catch a flu. How, so we would see whether the Reserve Bank of Australia decides to uh, become uh, aggressive or hawkish in raising rates, and if they do, that could really support their currency and send it much higher. We see um, some support. You know, I mean, it's kind of we were janky here because we um, we came down here at this low 6037 back in 2008, came back down and pushed through from Wick down to 5533, came back up, rallied almost to the old high uh, that we had back in 2018, and then we dropped down again a little higher. So we have a higher low um, in uh, in the Australian dollar. And we have a, a what we call a morning star reversal candlestick pattern, which is quite bullish. So the three candle pattern consists of a bearish red candle, a small body doji indecision candle, which is like a cross, and it's like the decision made at the cross, right? To you accept Jesus Christ, you go to heaven, and you don't, you go to hell, right? So here's your cross, right? The cross is on the chart, so so uh, there you go. You got their charts right there, and um, so here we go. We've got indecision right here. Because why we have a rate decision coming up and people don't know where they want to take it. This bullish candle with this breakout above the high of the doji would be bullish continuation pattern for me. I, you know, but uh, again, we can, you know, we do have a downward trend line which has not been um, well. We kind of sort of broke, yeah, but with a, with a doji. But again, it's a monthly chart. Let's dive on down to a um, a daily chart. And then we can see what's going on here. Expand this out a bit, and then we can see that we had a bit of su uh, support that came in, and prices are moving higher highs and higher lows. We have an uptrend, so we are our you know our bias based on the trend is up. And remember, this is the Australian dollar versus the U.S. dollar, and we already we already established that the U.S. dollar was going down, so. We figure that anything versus the dollar would be going up, and there's also there's also some 72 year, 70 over 70 year cycles that go back to the 50s, which show that during this time of the year, if you go back, you know, if you, you go back to like look, November of 2021, we were in uptrend. You go back to like 
2020, you know, of November, we were in an uptrend, you know. Uh, you know, we were, you know, here's 2020, here's November, and we rallied up. So this is a cyclical pattern if you go back, you know, many, many years. And you can see in November, we, you know, here's this, here's October 31st, sell a man, go away, come back Halloween, right? And then we'll so we got this uh, uptrend here going back. So going back years and years and years and years, you know, November is uh, usually, you know, or if it's delayed a little bit. So we had a little bit of a downtrend here, but then it rallied in December. Um, you know, so we've got this December, no, this Christmas Santa Claus kind of rally that ties in with equities and things like that. So this thing, if we trade US dollars for S&P 500, then our indices should be up. S&P 500 and NASDAQ should be up as well. The Australian dollar tracks very closely the S&P 500. And if you go ahead, if you want, if you want to see, Here's SPX 500, and I can put that on there, and I, yeah, then we can see that they, they they basically track each other. So if you're trading, if you uh, or, or if you're trading the Australian dollar, just take a look at what's going on with the S and P 500, and you're going to be in good company, right? And hey, and no, no extra charge for that piece of lesson right there, right? Stuff I teach in mentorship. This is just a sample of my 27 years of experience uh, teaching people how to trade. Um, and uh, we'll work, no, I worked for the world's largest forex broker dealer in the world, forex capital markets at the time. I've also worked for Pepperstone. I mean, I've got my pass here. I got the I'm, I'm a Wall Street insider, so um, I put my uh, my experience uh, on the line every Monday with my mentorship class. And, um, and you, know, you have an opportunity, just go up and click the link up there, or, or, well, Four Pillars of Six Figures to register for a free masterclass. So you can learn about my strategy, learn about uh, how I teach. And if you're a good fit, you know, book a call with my member of my team. And we'd love to talk to you about opportunities to enroll in the Elite Traders University. And Elite Traders University is one of the premier uh, organizations for teaching people how to trade and trade profitably. In fact, um, uh, the vice president of Surge Trader, uh, Corey um, Andrews, reached out to me and says, "We love your traders. Uh, can you like you know, tell them about our program? Because you, we, there's a good fit the way you teach people how to trade, money management, risk management, and how to be profitable. And so that's why I uh, worked uh, working alongside with Surge Trader and trading the my traders to pass their challenge." Uh, to you know, ten percent on their accounts in order to get a funded, uh, a funded account, and you have funded accounts all the way up to you know fifty thousand, uh, a million, a million dollar accounts. In fact, I signed up for one myself. So, you know, you never trust a skinny chef because he doesn't eat his own cooking. I eat my own cooking, and I love Surge Trader. Um, and uh, in fact, uh, uh, you know, I'll tell you, I'll show you more about my Surge Trader account and how in my journey. To 10% of my million dollar account, and I'm almost there. So I'll, I'll to show you that if you stay stay tuned for more. Okay, so Australian dollar. Let's go. We drop down to a daily chart. Let's drop down to a four hour chart, and we can see we've got um, you know we're still hugging the, the trend line, breaking up, and and making making new highs here. And so we, we want to look at a possible you know what could happen. Uh, if that announcement comes out uh, hawkish, we could see a break of that 60. We will look to see, look for a break above 68.42. And if we get a break above 68.42, then what comes into play are, we, we have our old levels of support that come in, into play. But let me, I don't forget uh, the monthly chart. If I go back to our monthly chart and put on our Fibonacci, right? Like, look, we can look at, Look how much data that we can look at. We can see, you know, almost like having um, like having X-ray vision or having long having the, the sight to be able to look at. I mean, that's why we want satellites in the air to help us help the military in order to get that big overall picture of the terrain and to know where our enemies and our allies and our resources are located by looking at that that high ground look of the of the market. So we want to take that 50,000 foot satellite view of the market so we can see uh, what's coming up next, right? And we can see that there is a uh, Fibonacci area at 76.53. It's a while, I know it's a big, it's a big, big while, but there's also support uh, resistance levels here at the uh, 75.00 area. If we can break, crack this Fibonacci where we're at right now, 
uh, this 23% retracement, then the 38 comes into play and, you know, it could run for several days or, um, or several weeks, actually. So let's go back to here is our, here we are. We're butting up against this area. We have the 200 simple moving average, which also acts as resistance at 69.26 on our daily. 200 simple moving average is one of the most widely watched technical indicators. And uh, what it, it does is like there's 252 trading days in a year. And basically, it's like a report card, either below the average or above the average. So right now, we're below the average, but we're, we're closing the gap there. In fact, 69.18 is almost uh, uh, 190, uh, 100 and, yeah, 127 pips away, right? And we could continue to move higher, uh, given the RBA, the Reserve Bank of Australia, giving us the go-ahead that they are going to you know, hike rates and keep, keep this thing uh, going. Because they have to fight inflation, too. Right, so you have this weakness in China, but you also have inflation, and you know, housing inflation is really high. It, it really, you know, and very um, high in Australia. So they want to maybe cool that that market. So we're buddy up against resistance. Uh, we have big rejection candle, big bearish rejection candle, but a, a bullish candle as well. Again, we are looking for uh, maybe a break above six. Uh, uh, this area sixty-eight fifty-two for. Uh, possible move but you also maybe draw a trend line across the top there and look for a break of the high of 68.17 um, and that would probably be something to, to look at as well uh, but uh, we're you know bulls versus bears we are we bullish the uh, the Australian dollar because remember it's Australian dollar versus the US dollar and what we're saying is that the dollar is trending down and so um, these other currencies should continue to move higher. Seasonally, the dollar is down around this time anyway. And it's been going on for, for decades, for decades. Okay. All right. So let's move on to our, we looked at the, uh, the pound versus U.S. dollar. Yeah, no, that's not, we haven't done that yet. Let's go ahead and take a look there. Look, see there at the GBP. I'm going to oh, turn off my bull. I'm so bullish, I got to turn it off. Okay. GBP USD. Because we do have uh, some uh, manu uh, production manufacturing uh, data coming out, mum bon mum, and let's go ahead and take a look at that. Start with our fifty thousand foot view. We're gonna climb into the into the clouds, and we're going to take a overall look at the terrain, and look at this big move in the in the, the pound dollar, and this is almost like a nod to the queen, you know, kind of like hey, you know. Like an airplane flies by, dips its wing in order to, you know, you know uh, to recognize a, uh, a fallen leader or something like that. And this is like a you know, 21 gun salute for the queen with that uh, wick there. So it'll forever be in the charts. And uh, so now uh, the morning seemed to be over. And so look, we are bouncing off of this support area 103, right? When the queen mother died, it, we had a similar drop, and we had a drop in the uh, when the when, the, the, when the, um, the Queen's concert had passed away as well, too. So now we're recovering from um, this, this, this area, this drop. And, uh, you know, we had some support there, a little wick below that. But for the most part, we were in a range, you know, from a low of 117.58 to 144. And if you, you know, we were just trading support and resistance here, and just, if you were a swing or position trader, um, then you probably this been, been the easiest thing in the world to trade is like buy and support sell it resistance okay but you didn't have this point so you really wouldn't know but here and then we came back down to here to this area here and then we rallied back up to old support old resistance you know in, in, in 2021 and then we came back down people probably thought that was gonna be a double or triple bottom triple bottoms are kind of uh, you know like unicorns they don't really uh, happen very often and then there you go we just plunged and then we broke back above this this very old support line and it's in an uptrend as well so this is extremely bullish right on the on the monthly chart and if we drip on drop on down we can see that this is coming up the 200 simple moving average on the daily we just broke the 200 so that's telling us that this is uh we're living above the 200 very bullish and uh, the next Fibonacci comes in at 129.29 or so. And that's uh, about, uh, what, 700 pips away. And, um, you know, 
And we also, we had a double top here that led to a drop. Triple tops, like I said, are rarer than hen's teeth. So a lot of people are looking at this as old uh, support or resistance, I'm sorry. And so uh, while many people are, you know, maybe going short on this, a break above this area would, would send us to, the, to Pluto. <laughs> that is a, it's a technical term, right? So we could see back up to this old, uh, this, this Fibonacci zone here, about the 15300 area. And then that is almost uh, like, like what, 720 pips away. So that is, would give us a, a, a good a goodly ride on the pound versus U.S. dollar. We can actually, um, especially if we get a, a very positive uh, production number, uh, a manufacturing uh, number, then that would really um, uh, give this a, a, a little bit of a, a kick in the butt, right? And remember, this is the, the GBP or the Great British Pound versus the U.S. dollar. And we've already established the U.S. dollar is heading down, which... By knowing the direction of the U.S. dollar, we know where the other currencies are going as well. Okay, so that is that for that. Uh, we can go back to, down to a four-hour chart. We can see higher highs and higher lows, and 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 we can see the the structure in that. And we want to you know maybe look for a pullback. But again, that double top, a lot of people are banking on that to hold. And when it gets broken, a lot of of of, of stops are going to be triggered in this area which would mean a, a ginormous rise in the pound very quickly. Mark my words, you know, we'll come back and talk about this next Sunday, and you'll, and you'll say, well, Greg, you're full of crap. That didn't happen. Okay, so don't, no, just be kind, but this this breakout looks pretty on, ominous there. Okay, so uh, pound versus U.S. dollar, um, bulls versus bears, I am bullish. Rawr. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, the next thing we want to look at. Um, we want to take maybe take a look at the the dollar yen because the, the, there is Japanese uh, data coming out. Dollar yen is a little bit different than say Aussie yen or pound yen or you know Aussie yen pound yen they move in the same direction as the S and P five hundred. Dollar yen does not. It, it does its own thing, but. A lot of people like trading dollar yen. In fact, look at this. Is this plummeting, right? Because it's going in the direction the U.S. dollar is weak, and so the Japanese yen is strong. And we, I mean, going back to uh, you know, backing out, going back to our monthly chart and working our way down, doesn't take that long. Remember, you can't do this on a phone very easily, you know. Um, however, uh, when you have uh, you know a chart. That you can go back in time and you can see where we've been so you can kind of predict where we could go right and that's what we want to do we want to anticipate where things are going i know people they react to this react to that but if you don't know where you're going reacting is sucks okay you get blindsided and many you know, traders are blindsided because they really don't look at the full picture and you can see that this old high was a high of 1998 whoa it happened to be the same high here and we dropped. So, you know, there's market had a memory, bunch of sellers sitting there, and boom, right? And then it, it, it took a while. It took, you know, a long time to get back to the support, but we don't really need it to go all the way there to make any money, right? The thing about it, is this is going to keep you from getting long, unless you're scalping and maybe a little bounce here and there. But here's our support levels that are quite clear. And you can see that, you know, even, you know, the market has a memory. But if you don't look at it monthly, you'll never ever see it, right? In fact, we're retesting the breakout point. The breakout above the 2002 high, 134.53, and we're retesting that now. I'm sure a lot of people are probably saying, oh, wow, return to the scene of crime, let's go buy. And you might get a little blip there, and then we might break on through to the other side, right? Break on through, break on through to the other side, break on through. Okay back to daily there we go uh, there we go and then so we have we're sitting at the 200 the moving average as well and uh, this level of support and uh, you know the market tries to get people on the wrong side of the trade so if everybody is uh, buying here that means that you know we could get a continued run lower remember the dollars this is dollar versus the yen and the dollar is weaker we could see a, a move down in the Japanese yen right 
and if we go back to our monthly and add our Fibonacci's you can also see and we might not go we could go as high as where we had here maybe we go back to 72 one this thing is way back goes back to 71 right to the Bretton Woods agreement Probably don't want to go that far but maybe this high here we have a head and shoulders in a downtrend back from 1984 and um, there we go and I'll tell you a story I, I got a Japanese car in 1983 or 84 and all of a sudden you know it, you know the, the 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 price it used to be you can look at the sticker of a car and put your hand over the sticker and say no I don't want to pay sticker price because hey you know they'll take no they never you, know, you never pay full price for a car however Japanese cars at this time were like going crazy high because the yen was getting stronger so I got screwed on my first uh, I got purchase of a car so I bought a Honda and the Honda was like you know it was like like four thousand it was like three thousand dollars above sticker you know which is like why is that so, but you know if people were like well japanese cars are reliable and you know i you know, bought the i bought the top of the market right um but you know that's that, that's what happens when you're on the wrong side of the currency market um here's a daily chart there and here um so uh, bulls versus bears that's what i'm saying i am bearish this pair right and there okay all right so let's move on move right along let's go ahead and take a look at the, the next bit of news is going to come up is from canada the we're going to look at the canadian dollar usdcad and we'll take a look at that and uh, we're going to look at our monthly chart go to our higher time frame and move all the other drawings i have and then we can see uh, we want to get a lot of data so we can see what's going on here and get a full on view, you know, and you can see big rise in the market in the dollar CAD. We got a high of you know, 160, 195. I haven't seen those numbers in forever. And then we got to a low of 90, uh, 64. But then we have spots in the middle. We have this double top, very clear double top here. I mean, we got short there. It was like a fortune to be made, right? Um, and then we have some support that we came in here at the 12044 area. And then we had a rejection point here at the 130, uh, almost the 140 area. We can go ahead and put some uh, level of resistance there. And this is very simple. Just put some horizontal. I'm just clicking a horizontal line tool. And you know, there's some, some resistance right in there. So we have like lots of levels of resistance in here. And then if we uh, went to our high and then we put our Fibonacci in, well, then that's also pretty cool as well because we can go from the top to the bottom and now we're here and we can see that look at this double top at the 786 78.6 percent retracement that means price retraced 78 percent of the down move did it twice and then dropped and now we have a double bottom right but remember we're trading the US dollar versus the Canadian dollar and we're making some lower high same low we made a lower high here right so we have this downtrend it really needs to be and we have an evening star pattern which is a three candle bearish pattern a bearish reversal pattern where we have this long green candle followed by a red candle and another red candle there and that's our bearish evening star pattern but we also have a bullish harami which is kind of like you know that's why they call this pair the loony right the Canadian dollar is a loony because it's kind of crazy right um, so we can see a little bit of a, a move higher and this is a monthly chart right so we probably need to go um, to a um, and we have a, also have this rising trend line too so uh, let's go down to a daily we can and we can see in more granular we can see there's a head and shoulder pattern here and I have a head and shoulders tool head and shoulders Greg is this a shampoo commercial say no 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 so this is our head and shoulders. It's a bearish reversal uh, chart pattern where we have a, um, a left shoulder, uh, a head which is higher than the left shoulder, and then a right shoulder which is lower than the head. And it's a bearish pattern. And we've dropped. So you know it met the first price objective. 
You know, one of the price objectives, the way we find that is to measure the top of the head to the neckline. This is the neckline. And then we uh, clone that like a sheep. And then, um, and then we add that. So really, we haven't hit the, uh, the, 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 the price objective of the head and shoulders. The head and shoulders pattern that would take us down to like a 130.51. That would take us down there. We're also, um, again, the Bank of Canada is going to talk about interest rates. Uh, Canada is one of the largest suppliers of oil to the United States. Oil prices have been down, and uh, you know sometimes oil prices can impact Canada. And uh, so you know, we'll see if they are still concerned about inflation that they will raise rates and if they do then we could see a break of this trend line and moving toward our target but we what we have in our favor is we know which direction the u.s dollar is going right um you know if our theory is correct then the dollar is weaker than the canadian dollar and they raise interest rates then we could see this drop down to this target of like 130.51 the measurement objective of the bearish head and shoulder pattern right like, you know, we can, you know, we can go granular too. We go down to maybe a four hour chart, which is our, and we can see small body candles. You know, maybe we try to retest the, you know, um, I mean, there's some highs right there. Maybe we work our way up a little bit, you know. Um, so it may not be a, a you know, we might work our way until the announcement before we get our, before we get our break south side right now we now we you know we've got a triangle and you know sometimes triangles are like the question mark at the end of the sentence am i going up or am i going down right so really so uh, it may even it might even go up and then go down right uh but given uh, what's going on here we've got some lower highs and lower lows and we also have a bunch of higher you know, we're kind of grinding in this kind of overlapping wave pattern, this overlapping can't get out of its own way. It's not a smooth drop where you're like, like this, and it's not a smooth rise like we had earlier where prices just jammed up, pull back, jammed up, pull back. The angle that price rises shows that we're an uptrend. And when we have this angle here, it kind of shows us that we're just kind of uh, grinding along, grinding out the bulls, grinding out the bears, you know, the, you know, the, the bulls hang on too long, they lose all their profits, the bears try to stay too short, then it goes up on them, trying to drive everyone out of the market, and then finally, finally take off and head off in the direction it wants to go. Uh, but bulls versus bears, I am cautiously bearish, right? Okay. And so that's for uh, our dollar cad, okay. So the, the Canadian dollar was on our radar, the pound dollar was on our radar, the yen was on our radar, and the Australian dollar. Uh, but I'll go ahead and throw Bitcoin in there because, you know, guess what? BTC versus USD. Okay, so I'm just going to throw this in here because, you know, if the dollar is going down, then Bitcoin should go up, right? You can't really have a rally in Bitcoin without a drop in the dollar. So let's go ahead and look at the monthly chart because that's the, the, the mistake that the crypto guys are doing is that you know they're they're you know they're hodlers and all this stuff but you gotta understand where the U.S. dollar is going and the interest rate picture and we can see that uh, we have a uh, we take our Fibonacci there and you know we got we hit that low uh, on uh, November first, twenty twenty two, and you know, we could see ourselves bouncing up from that area, right? Um, we've fallen a long way, and uh, on on the back of higher interest rates, and which made because we we what we trade U.S. dollars for Bitcoin or Bitcoin for U.S. dollars. As the dollar falls, then people try to look for assets which are going up against the dollar, and Bitcoin is one of them. So we can look at this monthly chart. We're basing what we'll look at these strong bearish candles bear 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 oh bull oh bear bears are getting weaker and then stronger weaker but they're nowhere near the bearishness they were just a few a uh, few months ago right 
So this slowing down of momentum is telling us that this has a chance to break higher, right? And uh, you know, most people are not gonna buy until this thing breaks down and it's too late, right? Um, so let's go down to a daily. And we can see that the momentum is going, uh, it, it, the bearish momentum is fading, the bullish momentum is picking up steam. We can see this double bottom on the, at 15,671. Uh, uh, 15, yeah, we can see um, uh, the bulls trying and then getting a little bit of traction there. And then, you know, we're kind of flagging our way up very slowly. Uh, we can go down to a four hour chart and we have similar uh, move and we can see that we're really, you know, failure swing. Where Bear said, yeah, we got him. Short, short, short. Oh, no. Oops. <laughs> you know? So now so now the, the bulls are, are in charge. And the dollar is falling. So people are exchanging their dollars for Bitcoin or Aussie dollar or stocks. And we could see this a rally maybe up to the 200 simple moving average of 17,583, uh, which is not that too far away. You can even go maybe to a one hour chart and see that we are still kind of flagging up. And you could probably get up to this old resistance area, 18,151. And you know, that's like a thousand dollars away. But ultimately I think we, uh, that we break and we come back and test this 20,000 area. Okay, so I'm actually, uh, you know, bulls versus bears, even though I'm, uh, I don't trade this very often, um, I'm I am a bull. I'm a Bitcoin bull, right? And so let me get that on there, all right? So I am I am bullish. Now we can look at some of the indices as well. Oh, sorry. And look at the S and P five hundred, SPX five hundred, and we both think we bombed out there with the you know. Um, we have the really good um, numbers, you know, bottoming bottoming numbers at the 3600 area, which was almost a double bottom, just a little bit like an overshoot, and then buyers stepped in and drove this back up, and uh, we're at the 4104 area, and um, so I mean, let me let me remove all these lines, remove all the drawings, and go out to go out to our daily and our monthly. Again, you want to go out that monthly and you can see, wow, look at that, right? Very interesting. You know, we have this big spike down and pullback. And you know, you can take a dip from that, from that, from that low to high. We dropped right to the 50% retracement at the 3505, bouncing up from that area. We have our Harami in the monthly, which could be bearish. Um, but let's go to a daily chart and see what that looks like close up and we can see that that, um, that we were, were on the 200 simple moving average and you see once we break that that FIP sits there at 4182 but if we break that there's like lots of clear space on this daily chart uh, we have a high of 4350 which uh, may hold uh, maybe a good target you know that's like a 290 point move you know if we can get past this FIB and then there's empty space to the 40, 4800 area, but there is some obstacles in the way. There's like a 4620, but you know, technically speaking, this the the, the this time of the year the S and P 500 rallies anyway. You know, you got this December through December through May. You know, so then sell a man and go away. But this is where you make hay, make make your money, and and you know, um, so we can also. Uh, drop this down to a, a four hour chart and we can see that uh, you know we are this surging just these big green candles and pullbacks and then surge 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 and then every pullback they're, they're they're buying hard you know you can tell you can look at that so any dip in this is a, a buy opportunity um, and that would be very helpful right um, let's look at that the NAS, NASDAQ 100 yeah, one hundred. We can take a look at that, and let's, you do the same thing. Kind of we'll go, we'll go to our monthly chart and work our way. It's gonna be about the same. You know, like you know, we can see that we uh, had a big pullback and look a morning star pattern, 
add a level of support. We can use that wick as our anchor for Fibonacci. And we can see that we came right to the 618 at uh, 10,531. And we're working our way back up, you know, in, in, the, in the, you know, breaking, breaking Fib. We just broke the 50% Fibo. And we will look at the 12,976 as a target. But let's break it down. I'm sure there's some obstacles on the way. The 200 simple moving average, we haven't broken at 12,434. It's a good intermediate target. And there's a gap candle down here from 12,836 down to uh, 12,099. If we look to fill that, then that's, uh, you know, that's a, a goodly amount of hit, almost 1,000 points uh, in movement that we could see. You know, kind of inverted head and shoulders kind of pattern here. Um, kind of pseudo shoulder, head, shoulder. Let's see if we can draw that out. Left shoulder, head, right shoulder. There we go. Right? Inverted head and shoulder, quasi, kind of like quasi motor, like a hunchback of Notre Dame, kind of, right? But this is bullish as well. Bulls versus bears in the NASDAQ. I, I'm, I'm bullish. And um, you can drop down to a four hour chart and you can see that we are maybe, maybe flagging right there and we break above 12, 12, 139. This thing has lots of open space to run once we get out of this congestion zone, right? And we're bouncing. Look, tag the we tag this four hour chart, tag the Fibonacci, the monthly Fibonacci, right? And buyers stepped in right there. So shows you that this stuff, they, the people are paying attention to it, right? So yeah, that is uh, that. They'll, they'll be it on our technical analysis. I just want to uh, to to. Uh, to encourage you guys to to look at surge trader um i'm in the surge trader challenge which is really cool i've got a, a bunch of but not this one but i got a bunch of trades uh going on here I'm, in fact i bought i got the million dollar trial account i'm up twenty five thousand four hundred dollars um all you gotta do is hit the one hundred thousand dollar mark and then i get a one million dollar funded account which is pretty pretty cool indeed right so I'm here in equity and I need to get there, but zero losses is not kind of a good, good way to start, right? And so these are some of my trades. I just kind of like rattled them off, you know, and, um, you know, um, it, it zero losses, you know, which is not pretty cool. Well, of course, Elite Trade University, that's what we teach, right? You know, uh, but I, you know, I, I think, you know, if you guys you know, want to really are serious about uh, trading, you know, f forget, you know, putting... Oh, you know, risking into risky high leverage uh, brokers overseas. You can trade with Surge Trader, um, and you know, put four or five hundred bucks into their program, and you can you can uh, control, you can control no twenty five fifty a hundred thousand. Get that you put seven hundred bucks, you can control a hundred thousand dollars. In fact, people who are signing up for mentorship now through the uh, end of December. Um, we're giving you a try the hundred thousand dollar audition and we're going to help you pass that audition when you sign up for mentorship so you want to find more about the mentorship go to the free forex master class pillars of six figures.com and um and that way you, you can we can uh, we can train you and get you you know doing the 10 percent. all you gotta do is hit 10 percent um and then after you hit 10 percent, within 48 hours they fund you fund your account and now you are trading with a with a, a sizable account because the number, one of the number one reasons why traders are not successful is they're undercapitalized, right? And instead of you know you know you know reviewing your credit card all the time and you know sending Bitcoin to an offshore broker, you can trade with Surge Trader. And with Surge Trader, uh, you just pass the audition. Now, you can, if you have greater than 5% drawdown in your system, you probably shouldn't be trading anyway, and that's probably why you're losing. Uh, but we're by, by trading, uh, using proper risk management and having drawdowns under 5%, you're able to have a lot of, uh, you're able to have a nice living. Because if you, you, you can make 2-3% uh, per day, you know, 10% a week, uh, you know, $10,000 a week, $40,000 a month is not bad, right? And what would that be worth, right? Well, probably a lot more than uh, what I charge for mentorship. And um, you know, I actually have a student actually went through uh, that. So he actually uh, he um, he did uh, he he got it uh, through the, went through the funded program, 
and uh, his name was Robert, and he went through a funded trader program. He started my class in June, and um, and, and then um, he made forty-seven thousand eight hundred two dollars and eighty-seven cents. Sorry for the, you know. And he wrote, thank you. He says forty-seven thousand funded account, pipping and running, and you were crushing it, bro. And he got to keep eighty percent of that, eighty percent of that. So he got to keep like thirty something thousand dollars, and he wound up paying off the course and having lots of money left over. Um, so and he, you know, he found the, the training invaluable that we have at Elite Traders University. That's why it's called Elite Traders University because we get elite results. If you look at the testimonies from my students and what they can do uh, in just a short amount of time. This time next year, you don't have to be where you are. You know, uh, I'm a doctor, and you've got the disease of lositis, right, or lositis, and I can cure that because I can show you my system how we can get per consistent wins over time, over and over again, right? I mean, this is I mean, this is what I did for the challenge so far. Um, you know, this is um, November 30th. You know, twenty-five thousand bucks, uh, which is you know taking repeated trades over and over again um, using their MT4 platform, and um, you know, I mean, just think, you know, two hundred dollars a day, fifty thousand dollars a year, four hundred dollars a day, a hundred thousand dollars a year, thousand dollars a day, two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, four thousand dollars a day, a million a year, and you'll be able to clone that account, and uh, and that's a that's a beautiful thing. Uh, to be able to do that search trader I, I've looked at a lot of different um, companies and like I said you know their 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 their, their dashboard and uh, and how they uh, handle their clients is is second to none in fact Corey Andrews the vice president at the uh, search trader reached out to me and this uh, said you know we love the way your traders trade uh, can you, you know, share? You know, we like, we want to partner with you. They want to partner with Elite Traders University. I said, yeah, the, you know, let me do it first and let me see what's going on. And um, I I'm, I'm I really love the results and uh, I'll keep you guys uh, updated um, to to how to do it. But you know, being able to instead of putting four hundred dollars in some demo account that could blow up, put you know you can purchase a uh, you get Surge Trader and we're gonna give you that that audition. Uh, if you join mentorship again go ahead to uh, four pillars of six figures and you can go ahead and look at our master class and then see how i trade see how my system and if it's a perfect fit for you feel it's right for you then you can contact one of my uh, enrollment specialists you know a member of my team or you might even get me and uh, we can talk and see if uh, the, our program is right for you and, uh, and if you have uh, the resources the time the energy and the motivation to be helped and we can help you well then we'll definitely accept you into elite traders university if we can't help you we'll definitely let you know about that we are selective of who we let into the program but if you are interested in in, in changing your life because you change your trading you change your life and life you have is kind of correlated to how you trade right um, so if you want to have that edge that, that you've been looking for and I've been talking to guys on the phone and and some of them have been tr trying to do this stuff for like five and six years and your wife is tired of hearing about oh yeah one day honey I got this Forex thing and you're, you're gonna bring you home from work and we're gonna have a nice car and, and they get tired they get worn out of all the promises year after year and every day every day you try you're, you're staying up late you're getting up during London session and you're not having any success whatsoever and what you need is someone to hold your hand to walk you through every step of the way so you can be consistently profitable, so you can take advantage of the program like Surge Traders offering and being able to be a consistently profitable trader and actually have a trading business and not a hobby. Something that you're proud of that you don't, or you, that instead of holding your head in shame that, oh, you're a Forex trader, ho, 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 you still have the same car in the same house, blah, 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 you're, you even have, a, you know, you know, how it, you know how it is. You know, you've been trying this thing, you stepped out, you were a young man when you started, now you're old and you're still trying to do it, right? And no one believes in you, but we believe in you. Because if you have us and you have this system, you can crush it. You can crush it. You can crush it. You can crush it every single day. You can uh, you know, make money on demand. And uh, with Surge Trader as your, as your partner, um, and you get to keep 90% of the profit, this is just a no-brainer, guys. It's a no-brainer. Um, so again, if you want to, uh, you know, 
uh, contact me or, or reach out and join Elite Traders University. First step is to you know, register for the free Forex masterclass that's above, that's going across wwwfourpillars to sixfigures.com and uh, and then you can watch the, uh, the, 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 the the webinar. You actually can see me actually, I'm, like, I'm, I'm gonna be trading, uh, you know, a recording of maybe trading live in the market and you see how I actually do it and how I can scalp the market like I'm doing right now. I mean, I'm not doing this now, this is a recording. It's a loop recording, you know, because I was was showing off what I was doing, right? Because I can't I can't Photoshop that. <laughs> can I photo I can't Photoshop that? Oh, you're using CGI, Greg, <laughs> right? But I just wanted to give you hope because I have a vested interest in helping you. I, you know, my uh, uh, my great grandfather, uh, who was an ex slave, former slave, you know, started a school for you know for freed slaves. Right to, to help them out, to help them to, to become free. They've never been free before, and this is the school they started. And then you know the KKK burned it down, but they they weren't deterred. They they made another school to help freemen and help them to uh, to, um, to 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 make it in this in this new world. And I you know I it's, I found in my blood. No, I'm Thomas Gregory McLeod. He was Thomas Franklin, Thomas Abraham McLeod, and um, and I was named after him. And so I see now that, you know, I'm, I'm freeing people from the slavery and bondage of, of their jobs, of poverty, of, of income inequality, whether you're white or black or yellow or whatever you, know, you are, you, you deserve a chance to, um, uh, to, to live free, you know, free of a job and free of, of those types of, uh, of things that are holding you back because the system says, Hey, if we have too many people with jobs, it's bad. And if people make more money, it's bad. So it's already kind of stacked in against you anyway. They tell you one thing, yeah, we want the American dream, but then they say, well, we got too many people employed, so we go lay people off and the stock goes up. And if you're tired of being a pawn, like maybe you saw what happened during COVID, and if something else happens, it'd be cool to be able to press the button from home or from anywhere in the world because you have the time flexibility and the money flexibility to do what you want when you want to do it. And you can't do that now, right? But it's something that you always want to do. It's the reason why you got into Forex trading in the first place. You got into Forex trading for freedom, but you've been, but, but basically you've been a slave to the computer going around in circles, different YouTube videos and different chat rooms, and they don't offer you any hope, guys, right? I'm a Wall Street, former Wall Street insider. I was against you. I was on the other side of the coin. I was, you know, I was looking at your orders blow up on the other side of the screen. But now I'm on your side now. And this is your chance. I'm not cheap. I'm not free. I'm not free date. <laughs> you can't buy me a sandwich and pick my brain. But you, if you are committed, uh, you'll make far more than I could ever charge you. Uh, you know, because it's an investment. It's value. It's you know, cost and value, the, uh, you know, the value that you get. Um, and I have hundreds of testimonies on my, my YouTube channel showing people who have have made it across the finish line in Forex. So, you know, I, I talked to one guy who's been trying to do this for 22 years. And in fact, I said, well, what does your wife think about this? Said, well, I didn't ever got married because I was trying to make money in Forex. I was trying to, I tried to make money trading. Or I had one guy who lost eighty thousand dollars. I said, "Why don't you get in the course?" He's, "Oh no, no, my my, my position's in the I, I I'm I'm long SPY. It's gonna go higher." I'm like, "Oh my God, are you kidding me?" <laughs> so he's going, but you know, got a hot tip from something. And uh, so he wound up losing all of his money. He didn't have any money to get in the course. I'm like, going, "Okay, well, you know," uh, um, but uh, you know, my, my 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 thing is that I I I want to help. Um, but you gotta meet me halfway and search trader is such a game changer guys it's such a game changer you just don't understand when when Corey reached out to me I said man we are aligned because I want to help traders succeed help them push volume you want volume and I look if I'm pushing this much volume by myself and I could have other people pushing this kind of volume too then it's a win 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 for everybody right it's a win 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 for everybody and so let me be your partner, your guide, your teacher. I really want to see you on the other side. 
I loved hearing your stories of the cars you buy or the people that you helped or the missions that you helped to fund. Now, all those things are possible now. They're not just a pipe dream that, you know, and I talk about compound trading. Yeah, you can take a small account, compound it. But I tell you what, when you can compound a $100,000 account or a $50,000 account or a $200,000 account like you can a surge trader, that is a game changer. That's, that's real. It's something that you can almost feel like Christmas. Like this is a Christmas present that you can give yourself that will keep on giving. So go ahead and click the link below in the description and go ahead and join the Four Pillars of Six Figures webinar and then go ahead and register for to a strategy call with uh, one of my with one member of my team. And we'll see if, you, if we can help you or not. I know we can. We've helped so many other people and I look forward to being your coach, your mentor, and, and, and showing you the life that you've always dreamed about, that you've always, you've been hoping for, right? This, we all have the similar, we all have the similar goal, okay? So again, my name is Greg McLeod, Dr. Greg McLeod from the Elite Traders University. Um, farewell or see you later, happy pipping, <laughs> cheers. And I hope you enjoy this. If you have any questions, you know, you can go ahead and pop them in the comments section and we can, um, we can talk from there, okay? And um, make sure you like, and subscribe to this video, right? That's how you're supposed to say it? Okay, I don't know. All right, bye-bye. If you felt a spark here and want to see how these principles can be used in your own trading, go to www.elitetradersuniversity.com forward slash apply to book a free session with our team. We have helped hundreds of people remove the frustration and obstacles in trading to become consistent, highly profitable traders. These are proven principles that just work. Happy pipping!